So one of the things that I love about starting my channel so early in my Supreme Commander process, whenever I was way worse of a player than I am today, I'd like to think that I've gotten better, is that uh, y'all can see some of the transformation as far as my opinions on things. For those of y'all that have watched my channel for a long time, through the life cycle of my channel and me as a Forge Alliance Forever player. That being said, I think I've been a little too hard on one faction in particular in this game. What's up, everybody? Hello and welcome back to the show. So I was working on a science video this evening and got all the, I guess you could call it B-roll footage, <laughs> I guess, shot. Um, wrote my script, recorded my voiceover, and um, just kind of hit a wall as far as like what I wanted to do. So I figured I would unwind and uh, play a game before I actually went and assembled all the footage with my voiceover. It's a very long process for science videos. There's a lot of work that goes into it. But uh, that being said, I decided to take a quick break and uh, play an actual game of Supreme Commander, which is uh, what you're going to see here. So. I'll introduce the players real quick. Um, you have me in the northwestern corner. I'm actually playing Aeon, the most hated of all of the factions. Uh, to my south, we've got Vex, who is going Seraphim, and Bubba Fret, who is going Seraphim as well. First lane, second air. This dude is super chill. Played with him uh, actually several times. Uh, there was a cast that was featured on Function's channel, I believe. Uh, that had me playing either against or with him, if I'm remembering correctly. But super chill dude, really nice guy to play with. Uh, next we've got Blue on uh, the far southern side going Seraphim as well. So essentially three Seraphim and an Aeon. And on the other side, we've got Sock Full of Kids. And there's all sorts of memes that I could make with that name, but that's not the point of today's video going UEF. Next we've got Twisty Sauce, who is a mainstay of the Supreme Commander community. He's going Cybran. And last couple of slots, we've got JFK going Seraphim. And lastly, my opponent, who is a domination, not abomination, but a domination, which uh, sounds like some kind of kinky thing that you might do with uh, your wife or your girlfriend with some fuzzy handcuffs. Uh, he's going UEF and he's expanding to this northern slot. So uh, mostly what I'm looking to do in this game is uh, I think I've been a little bit hard on the Aeon faction. Part of that is I think a lot of, I just didn't really know how to play Aeon. And I'm not saying I figured it out entirely by any stretch of the imagination, but I think in this game, I actually played it pretty well. And I exhibited some, some strengths of the faction uh, and was able to play it correctly, semi-ish semi, semi -ish correctly. So by and large, to go over the strengths of the faction, if, if y'all don't know, um, Aeon relies a lot on longer range and by and large a little bit less HP on a lot of their units. Um, so uh, with the commander, the gun upgrade that you have on the commander has slightly higher range than any other gun upgrade. Uh, but it does require two gun upgrades, but it, it equals out to about the same. So, uh, But you do end up getting slightly higher range. I think it's like two units higher range as I'm suiciding units into an enemy commander that I had no idea about. and goodbye Dave and uh, Steve is probably going to be soon behind as Steve runs into his death well maybe not immediately but Steve I believe will die followed by Joe so Joe Dave and Steve all die to a very very bad rally point that I had set up uh, from my initial factory um, but like I was saying earlier Aeon benefits a lot from higher range and lower HP and to a meathead like myself that struggles with managing a lot of units on a lot of different fronts, I would never, I would never, I would still never play this faction on a ladder match. Uh, I'll make that very clear as uh, then uh, we've got um, Johnny who dies there to a bunch of strikers. I'm naming all of my tanks now. I think this one's name will be um, Tate and then this one's name will be Dylan and we'll, uh, we'll, mix the rest of the naming for the for the rest of the game uh but i would I, I don't think i would ever play this game on a on a ladder match just because um and i'll throw a picture of open palms up managing multiple lanes um on aeon is not something that my brain has the capacity to handle just being quite honest with you so 
Uh, my opponent's going for a gun damage and range upgrade, uh, which is the Zephamp upgrade. And I'm, I, I've actually decided to play this a little bit safer. So I've decided to, I'm going to abuse the range on my Auroras, take out this mechs, and then I'm going to further abuse it by harassing these strikers. So plant them firmly out of range of what the strikers are able to do. Force the strikers to react. I've taken out two of them. And we should be able to mop up the others. I think I will lose one tank here. Yep. So we'll lose one tank. But we're able to mop up a lot of his initial T1 forces here. As you can see, he's going for four T1 factories. Um, I was going for, I had initially planned, like my game plan in this game was to go for more of a tech heavy build. So I was only going to go for two uh, T1 land factories with a uh, this guy upgrading to tech two as quickly as possible at five minutes. So yeah, I'm, I'm upgrading real, real early. Uh, he's going for a gun upgrade, 77% the way there. But as of right now, I'm still just kind of abusing the range upgrade and I'm getting really, really good trades on um, a lot of my units. You can see a lot of these wrecks, these are UEF wrecks. These aren't, uh, very few of them are Aeon wrecks. And um, maybe it was because I queued up a lot of my build early on that allowed me to focus a lot on micro here. But I was able to focus a lot on this build uh, or on this uh, little army and keep them relatively safe while I was able to uh, kind of continue increasing my uh, build power, build capacity in the back line. So, Going for some more energy right now. I'm pretty energy. I'm pretty energy poor at this point in the game, um, and then went for a gun upgrade. And this is whenever I stalled energy real bad. So yeah, I was at like as soon as these engineers actually pick it up. I yeah, I'm like negative 700, negative 600. Uh, it was fluctuating a little bit, but I was very energy poor during this particular portion of the game. But it's okay because. I, using the range advantage, I have more T1 units on the field. I was able to clean up a lot of his initial T1 main battle units, and that buys me the breathing room that I needed in order to get my gun upgrade. Even though he already has his gun upgrade, he can't really do anything with it, uh, just because he doesn't really have that many units to support. And I don't think he knows that I don't have a gun upgrade yet. So that was kind of the grand, that was kind of the grand strategy, uh, if you will. And I had also, I hadn't paused my air factory yet. A lot of y'all that have watched my video on power stalling whenever you're upgrading a gun upgrade are screaming at me right now, you should pause all your factories. And I did eventually pause the air factory. My channel is one of uh, don't, don't do what I do, do as I say, because I think I can, oh, he had nano repair too. Okay. I actually didn't know about nano. But that makes actually a little bit more sense as far as... Because during some of the engagements, uh, it, it seemed like... It seemed like his commander was getting... It seemed like I was giving a lot worse than I was getting as far as my commander was concerned. But I was uh, still like about even with him as far as HP goes. Which honestly speaks to the strength of the Aeon as far as their range. Uh, but at this point in the game, I got my gun upgrade. I'm going for multiple energy storage to make sure I have a good buffer as far as overcharge is concerned. I've completed my T2 upgrade at eight minutes into the game really fast. I had no idea how quickly that was actually in game, uh, but that's a, that's a very quick T2 upgrade. Going to work on T2 engineers. Like I've said in my how to transition to T2 video, that is my preferred Kind of initial thing to do is go for a couple of t2 engineers right off the bat and uh get some t2 engineers out go for some t2 power and some additional uh t2 factories so commanders now clashing uh gun this is essentially just a gun upgrade for the aeon even though i have two upgrades on the commander versus a gun and a nano so i'm outmatched on the commander front i actually didn't realize this to be 100% honest with you guys. But again, I'm, I'm given better than I'm getting. He's down to AK HP, I'm still pretty healthy. Well, actually, I'm at about AK HP as well, but he has nano, so that gives him a nice little bump. I don't know if he actually went for energy storage. 
So he's going for rail guns and a lot of power generation. Okay, so he's got an energy storage queued up, but I don't think he had energy storage in that exchange, which would be a good explanation as to why I was able to do so much damage is because I have overcharge and he does not at this point. And we can actually, yeah, no overcharge available for him. He's also having trouble hitting back at my commander. Again, using the range and I'm keeping my units back behind my commander and letting the comm deal with a lot of his spam. And uh, down towards the south, uh, Blue was doing a pretty good job of pushing as well. So, you know, we're not we're not really focusing on that. But this was kind of like our mirror matchup. So a domination was a 1400, Blue is a 1500, and uh, the balance matched both up against a 1200, one being me and the other sock full of kids. And sock full of kids seems to have gotten the worse of the engagement. But once again, Able to force the domination off the line, able to pull my T1 units back. My commander deals with a lot of his spam with some overcharges as well as my gun upgrade. I did go for another T1 land factory. I thought that I was gonna need a little bit more spam than I was gonna get out of two land factories, which is, it's a very good thing that I did because I definitely needed those additional T1 units. So at this point, once again, he's pushing forward, and it seems like he's building only Lobos at this point, which uh, seems bad. Seems bad, man. There's like seven or eight Lobos up here and only a handful of Strikers. Maybe it's because all the Strikers are dying, but I thought I was a little, in a little bit of danger there, so decided to back my commander off. He also backed his commander off. I think he could have gone for the throat there. And that, once again, allows me to abuse the range of my gun commander to take out more of his units for free. You know, I bagged four or five Lobos on the way out. Didn't cost me anything. I've got one rank of Vet, which is fantastic. And the other thing is I have now got a supporting T2 land factory up and two land factories now producing blazes you're going to see the first of them now popping up on the front line i've also been critical of blazes in the past i've been very critical of the aeon faction really just as a whole um but i do think that blazes as far as in my particular scenario where i'm i was power starved i, I now have a t2 power generator so i could probably i could support obsidians at this point but where I was power starved before and going up against a lot of uh, T1 land spam, you needed to have something that had a little bit higher fire rate and something that didn't have an energy draw. And at this point, all I'm doing is trying to make sure that I take out all these point defenses. He was trying to do a T1 point defense creep, which is, uh, I would say questionable. Because it can get outranged by a gun commander and that's a lot of wasted mass. T1 point defense aren't super cheap. And I think I was floating a lot of mass at this point, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I got super I got super focused on the fighting and not very focused on my economy. So I think I mass upgraded a bunch of T1 uh, me mixes. Nope, that was later, actually. That was later. Just wait. I'll overflow mass at some point in this game. Don't worry. But taking out the Hydro. There's a nice little mass field here. Oh yeah, this is whenever I upgraded, uh, but I started producing just only engineers out of this factory to grab this mass field. We're able to bag this T1PD. This T1PD is next to fall, and my overcharge is getting ever stronger because now it's being supported by a Tech 2 power generator, and that is the dream right there. Able to take on another T1 power, or Tech 1 point defense. And at this point, I can move into his expansion. So once I take this out, he really only has... Oh, well, he didn't grab these three. So he only has four uh, mexes at his disposal. And three of them are tech one. And so he does have a good amount of spam, but he's not at tech two yet, which is a big problem. Um, I think these three mexes were just kind of like a no man's land for both players. I grabbed them <laughs> on my side. And just assumed that they were mine before Vex could uh, actually get them. So, sorry Vex, if those were actually yours. And I actually went and tried to grab uh, his Mexes at this point. I, I really should have pushed more. But it seemed like every time I saw his commander, it had way more health than mine did. And I should have put two and two together that he had nano repair. 
but I do have a pretty healthy amount of blazes on the front line now. And at this point, I was really concerned about an air snipe. That's what I thought was going to happen, so I started mixing in flak and moving my interceptors forward. But he's moving his commander in, massively overextended, spam, way out of position, trying to stop. And like we said earlier, um, sock full of kids got taken out and uh, the game was full share. So this does get transitioned over to JFK. And uh, I can bump this up a little bit because there's not really anything that happens in the game after this point, but I just, I wanted to, I wanted to show, I wanted to publish this game for y'all. First off to say, I think I'm, I think I've been wrong by saying that the Aeon is a dog shit faction. Uh, they're definitely outside of my comfort zone as far as uh, what I'm, what I am good at and what I'm comfortable with. I didn't even see that draw down there. But the Aeon is definitely a faction that is outside of my comfort zone as far as uh, my play style and what I'm good with. But I did want to show this because I think it's a good example of even if you're a mid-range player like myself, if you are mindful of kind of your units and you're playing in a single lane kind of map like this where really all I had to worry about was from this plateau up at the top down to this plateau uh, slightly to the south, then um, even if you're a mid-range player, you can succeed. You can abuse a lot of Aeon's strengths and, and really take out an opponent that really you shouldn't. I didn't talk about this, but the domination was a 1400 on the 1200. So that should have been a, a lopsided matchup. That should have been something that I lost. Maybe not lost immediately, but it should be should have been something that I lost over the long run. And instead, you kind of saw me get stronger over the long run. And I really, really chalk that up to the fact that the gun comm on the Aeon Commander has a slightly longer range and the ability of the Aurora very early on to harass and take out a lot of the early spam that came out of a domination space. So with that, guys, I'll leave you to it. And I really appreciate you all watching. If you guys enjoy videos like this, please consider liking and subscribing. Um, most people that watch my videos are not subscribed. It's a huge, it's a huge discrepancy. I think something like 80% of the people that watch my videos are not subscribed. So um, if you all would consider subscribing, if you enjoy this, I got a lot of Supreme Commander and Beyond All Reason content hosted on my channel. Um, that would be fantastic. And I will see you all in the next one. Peace.